Jeremy Paxman will be back with more tomorrow. Until then, from all of us in the programme, a very good night. Hello again. We've got some rather wet and windy weather across southeast England at the moment. More of that to come across England and Wales during the week ahead, but it does look as though Northern Ireland and Scotland will see some drier, sunnier weather. Now, the same strong winds that are blowing the rain across the southeast are also blowing the North Sea onto the coast of northeastern England. Now, there is a high tide at four this morning, and it's that combination that has led the Environment Agency to issue some coastal flood warnings for Sands End near Whitby and also Scarborough. For the latest details, the number to ring is the flood line number. That's 0845 988 Double eight. Now the heaviest of the rain will just edge its way a little bit further to the west overnight, but as you can see here, Northern Ireland and Scotland will stay dry with clear skies. Could be a wee bit misty by the end of the night in one or two places, and one or two places could also have a touch of frost on the ground. So once again tomorrow I think we're going to see a fair amount of sunshine across Northern Ireland and Western Scotland, rather cloudier skies to the eastern side of Scotland. Cloudy skies too for western parts of England and West Wales but it should stay dry. It's really uh, from the marches across to the east. We're going to see some rain around. Some of it could be heavy, uh, particularly through the Midlands and into East Anglia. If it does brighten up in East Anglia and Southeast England, there may even be a few rumbles of thunder. That northwest southeast divide continues through Tuesday and Wednesday, but on Wednesday we'll probably find the winds picking up and the rain increasing as another low heads our way from the near continent. Uh, it's going to be quite a, a quite an active feature, but Northern Ireland and Scotland still probably hanging on to the drier, sunnier weather. Now that low is going to continue to throw its cloud across the British Isles to the west on Thursday, but it'll be weakening all the while. So by Friday we're expecting brighter skies and the remnants of the low just giving a few heavy showers in that southeastern corner of the British Isles. Good night. Tomorrow on BBC Two, a unique chronicle of last week's disaster in America. One day of terror, New York Witnesses, is at 9pm. Our mission, to voyage deep into the abyss, where no one has been before. So we can introduce you to a new creature, the hairy angler discovered by our crew. The Blue Planet. Wednesday night at 9 o'clock on BBC One. Until now, we've only touched the surface. I've been a military historian all my working life. And I've always believed in going back to where military history was actually made. From the baking deserts of North Africa to the freezing skies over Berlin. I'm often cold, uncomfortable, and sometimes plain lost. But the one thing I can't experience is the fear. And so we're bringing you veterans to tell you what it was actually like for them. Travel with me to the battlefields of the Second World War. Four battlefields that changed the face of war. Starts Tuesday, 25th September on BBC Two. Slightly later than planned, now on BBC Two, celebrating 30 years of the whistle test with Bob Harris. Well, this is the site in Television Centre where, believe it or not, 30 years ago, television history was made. Uh, because just behind me here is the control room of what used to be the old Presentation B studio. This is where we broadcast the old Grey Whistle Test, which was launched actually in this area on the 21st of September, 1971.